And so without anything further, I'd like to introduce my friend and the speaker for the seminar, John Wimber. John Wimber imagined his life would be one party after another, but God had a different plan. Um, Terry Virgo would say that next to Billy Graham, the guy who influenced the church, the British church the most is John Wimber. Who is John Wimber? He was a common man. He was a musician. I mean, very, uh, you know, self-critical. Uh, I'm, I'm just a saxophone player on my way to heaven. I'm a fat man trying to get to heaven, etc. Hello, John Wimber. How's my brother? Good, how are you? It's lovely to see you, Paul. I'm, I'm trying to get all of your many titles and honors and so forth here. How would you introduce yourself? Oh, just an old guy trying to get to heaven. <laughs> Getting there faster than some others. John Wimber, leader of the Vineyard Movement, left a larger mark on Christianity than most understand. Whether it was the creation of what later became contemporary Christian worship, or a renewal of the biblical practice of spiritual gifts, so much of what the church experiences today has ties to Wimber. But who is John Wimber? The Vineyard's founder is a former musical arranger for the 60s hit singers, The Righteous Brothers. His name is John Wimber. John Wimber was born in Kirksville, Missouri in the 1940s. Not only did he grow up outside of the church, but he had almost no understanding of Christianity at all before his conversion. Oh, she told me God had a book out. I said, no kidding. She, I said, what's it called? She said, it's called the Bible. I said, God wrote that book? <laughs> he came to Christ at the age of 29 as a self-proclaimed alcohol and drug abuser. Some of John's ability to understand the mindset of non-churchgoers can be attributed to this background, and this awareness is evident in many vineyard churches today. In the year 1977, John started a Calvary Chapel church in California, but in 1982, the church separated from Calvary Chapel and soon became a new poster child for the vineyard movement with the name Anaheim Vineyard. In the early 80s, John Wimber took over leadership of vineyard churches and went on to plant hundreds of churches in the coming decades, first in America and then the rest of the world. When Wimber finally realized God's healing power at work today, he spent months praying for the sick and encouraging others to do the same. Hundreds of people received prayer yet remained unhealed. Eventually though, something changed and healing started breaking out left and right. John began traveling all over the world teaching and demonstrating God's healing power. Theologically, Wimber is best known for applying George Ladd's theology of the Kingdom of God to healing ministry. Ladd is known for the idea that the Kingdom of God is a reality that is both present among us, yet not entirely present. Or in other words, it is already, but not yet. We experience some of the goodness and power of God in the present, but we also wait for the day when God establishes His Kingdom fully. In application to healing, Wimber saw that this theology could help explain why we might sometimes see God heal people, but we don't see all people healed all the time. Wimber would go on to write several books that still remain popular among Christians today. Power Healing, Power Evangelism, Everyone Gets to Play, Kingdom Ministry, Kingdom Come, The Dynamics of Spiritual Growth, Power Points, and Kingdom Warfare, just to name a few. To say that Wimber's life and works have left a profound impact on Christianity would be an understatement. In all the travels I have around seeing all kinds of different churches and church movements, you see so many beautiful parts of the body of Christ, but the thing I think that makes the vineyard the vineyard is a complete expectancy in God's presence. It incorporated everybody into the game. It, it, an evangelist was no longer a person on a stage. Uh, it was no longer a big name, God's man of the hour person. It was every believer in every pew in every church in America. One of Wimber's most famous sayings was, everybody gets to play. He strongly resisted the church's trend of superstar ministers and unimportant lay people and wanted everyone to feel equipped to participate in God's kingdom. Wimber was always very open to the Spirit's leading and challenging the status quo. Sometimes this caused him trouble, particularly in the late 80s and early 90s when the Vineyard Movement was seen as moving in some directions that caused outsiders to be weary. Wimber was not thrown off by people's flesh entering the mix though in the midst of a move of God. At the same time, 
These incidents modeled the willingness to try new things, even if at times they're messy. John was a pioneer, and many people who take from his influence today benefit from the trial and error work that he was willing to take on. John was plagued by health problems in his later years and eventually died in 1997 from a brain aneurysm at the age of 63. Wimber's most significant legacy is the Vineyard Movement, but he left a widespread impact on Christianity in the U.S. and the rest of the world. He pioneered a new openness among mainstream evangelicals to the supernatural. Hundreds, if not thousands, of respected leaders all over the world consider John a significant influence in their life.